Heavenly Father, today we put on the full armor to protect us against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations. We put the gospel of peace on our feet to walk in your light, peace, and freedom with the Holy Spirit. We rebuke anxious thoughts. We take up your shield of faith for protection to block and destroy all the darts and threats thrown at us by the enemy. We put on the helmet of salvation to cover our minds and thoughts, reminding us that we are children of a mighty king. We are forgiven, set free, saved by the blood of Jesus. We take up the sword of the spirit, your living word, that has the power to demolish strongholds and is sharper than any double-edged sword. We come to you, Lord, in prayer daily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. What is up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Imagination. I'm your host, Emma, and I'm so thrilled for this episode this week. Joining me for the second time is someone who has risen up to be one of my top requested guests, former Hollywood movie producer, turned independent film producer, turned voice for the children and voiceless, John Paul Rice. John's massively successful 2018 independent film, A Child's Voice, which is an extremely well done thriller that guides viewers down a rabbit hole that skims the surface of human trafficking and SRA, was suddenly scrubbed from Amazon Prime Movies after it began to go viral. And shortly after, John took to Instagram Live, where he intended on talking about Amazon and the events surrounding his film being taken off their platform, and instead ended up engaging listeners in one of the most passionate, authentic, genuine, and heartfelt whistleblower videos of our time. Almost overnight, John's viral video spread like wildfire, and word of pedophilia in Hollywood and around the world was being shared millions of times and shaking the sand off everyone's eyes who watched. Although this live video still remains on his Instagram page, it's really hard to find on other platforms anymore as it's constantly being scrubbed the moment someone reposts it. I highly suggest finding and listening to A Child's Voice, which can be found on Vimeo and on free and for free on Tubi, and follow his Instagram page, both to find the viral IG Live, as well as to receive daily JPR insights worth reading that showcase the truth about what we see happening in the world today. Since then, John has continued to speak out, evolving his eloquent and before his time messages as he progresses his own journey of outer and inner standings. If you know or have listened to John, and I mean truly have listened, you know that he has one of the most important voices in this movement for our children and in how we make the world a better place. While other people are focused on division and hate, John comes from a refreshing place of compassion and love. His insights resonate deeply with those who are ready to receive them and offer a glimpse as to what the world would be like if we all took responsibility to listen to our own inner child's voice and if we'd only learn to love thy neighbor. For me personally, this podcast wouldn't exist without John's influence, and one of the biggest blessings to come from stepping into this movement is now being able to call John a friend. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming this week's guest of honor, survivor, film producer, voice for the voiceless, child abuse activist, man of God, and my dear friend, the one, the only, John Paul Rice. John, thank wow. you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Emma. That was a beautiful introduction, and um, I'm very honored to be here again. I've had so many requests for you to be back and it's great to catch up with you always. So I'm not complaining about the time that I get with you today. So it's <laughs> awesome to have you and I appreciate you taking the time to come on today. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an important time. We're at, at the end of the year. And one of the things that I wanted to, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on because I think for people who aren't familiar with, with your messages, and I know a lot of listeners are, they get a little glimpse as to a lot of the things that, that you talk about on podcasts if they follow you on social media. And mm -hmm. I think your messages have just consistently been before your time and people end up realizing you know, later on that a lot of the things that you're saying resonate. Um, but I think going into this new year, I think we need to you know, hire ourselves to see the world from a different perspective so many people are focused on details and they're so caught up in, in fear and in all of mm. these uncertain feelings and the vibration of humanity even people who are, are you know maybe the face of something or they're kind of on the forefront of telling the truth just the vibrations seem to be lowering it. and one of the things that i love about you is you're constantly trying to pull people out of that you're giving people hope you're showing them 
how we can make the world better, you know, and you do it from a perspective that that truly comes from your heart and it's so genuine. And so I wanted to bring you on today because I think that's a really important thing for all of us to habitually start thinking about is just things are happening in the world. A lot of us aren't happy about it, probably mm -hmm. most of us, if not all of us. And it, it's happening whether or not we want it to. And how mm -hmm. do we how do we overcome what's in front of us, even mm -hmm. if we can't solve it ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to just have a fun conversation with you about this and just talk about some of the things that you've talking about online. Um, but if there's anything that you want to catch anybody up on, I know it's been a little bit since you've been on, um, feel free to, to take the floor and, and we can just go from there. Sure. Um, well, I may I may ask you a couple of times, as you know, I can talk forever and give you endless this and that and that and this and this. Um, but people who've seen me over the years are it's it's seen me more passionate. Probably, I mean, I I've looked back at some of my interviews and I I don't watch them really anymore. I just kind of get a sense of where I'm at. Um. But I've, I've kind of calmed down a little bit in the sense, and not just by force of that, it's sort of feeling into it, really. Um, an inner peace and acceptance. Uh, and when I say acceptance, I don't mean like um, accepting like this is the way the world is. It's sort of like, this is what we're dealing with. This is the reality. This is what I can affect. This is... This is where I'm putting my I'm opening the door and allowing the world to come in and I have to decide what is of real value to me versus what is externalities that only contribute to a greater sense of despair or pressure or worry or all of these things and. You know it and I and I don't I didn't have the full picture in fact nobody. The truth is nobody has the full picture of what what it is they can only say like this is what i see this is what i feel this is what i know to be true and if that resonates with you in your world in your reality then i've in a sense done my job because it it's not about dictation we're in a time where uh authority, however we measure it, man-made authority, has come in and dictated what reality is, all right, on all dimensions. It's not the media, it's not Hollywood, it's not just our politicians, it's all of us. With scarcity, fear, and ignorance is a fueling breeding ground for narcissism. You get cults and not just religious cults or spiritual cults, you get corporate cults, you get political cults. You get people who fulfill each other's perception of a communist and a Nazi and both see each other as Nazis and fascists. And both of them believe that they're the hero in the story. This is a child abuse system. And the things that I was talking about in 2020 were what I could conceive of based on what I could feel. We've been taken away from the heart and put into our heads a literal deluge of analysis, numbers, um ideas but with no creativity so it's statistics cases deaths temperatures dropping increasing threats 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 this is threatening information and what that does in people and this is the thing that most people don't realize and i could be verified with people in advanced research today. But when we're talking about the matrix, what we're talking about is a prison of the mind that exists through beliefs. Beliefs where meaning from us is put into those things, institutions, politicians, 
businesses and corporations and brands. This is a world of illusion and falsehood because it's the inversion of the divine. It's, it's, it's feeding into a child abuse system where your identity is out there somewhere. Your future is out there somewhere. Your, your greatness lies elsewhere away from home. They talk about the attack on the family. It's been the attack on the home, on the heart. It's to instill fear and division in people where, they're, where they're, it's artificial. It didn't exist before, but it did back then in the childhood. What these people do to their children, they do to all of us. They ritualize trauma through events, psychological events, wars, famines, economic downturns. If you look all throughout history, this is how they've changed the scenes around. Great reset, many resets. That means there was, this is greater than all of them. The great one, like there was the great war, the war to end all wars. And what did that really mean is we changed time. We changed the configuration of the world to make it more like, they make the world in their image, which is a psychopathic, non-sentient world. That's what the transhumanist agenda is all about, is the mechanical nature of humanity that has been crushed and dumbed down to such a level that they believe and they'll be offered as a way out of their pain, technology to integrate with their biology, which then they have to give greater control of their intellectual biological property over to corporations that will trade that information on a blockchain and prevent access. It'll control the flow of information as well as the access, the tiered access that people want in order to exert greater controls over billionaires and millionaires. They no longer need a blackmail system of humans, right? Nihilism. People persecute Hollywood and um, debauchery and uh, uh, sexual, you know, misbehavior. I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like a prude, right? Just naming off all these these horrible, terrible things. But but what it is is that um, if we go down a road of condemnation, we eventually end up getting to persecution. History shows us that. And so when you have left-wing authoritarianism, you're going to have right-wing authoritarianism. But see, it's really not left-wing, right-wing. That's the appearance of it. What it is is a powerlessness among people who are so angry and enraged that they believe by killing their oppressor or their perceived threat, it eliminates that problem. Uh, you'll be seeing in the future anti-LGBT zones in certain states and cities, in rural areas, because of the, um, okay, so this is a really hard one for people to understand. I'm going to give you my, my understanding about this, which is a compassionate one that I don't believe has been put out there yet but I would encourage people to start with Alfred Kenzie's work, okay? And who he was and who supported him and why they elevated his work and what it gave birth to for future agendas, okay? Child abuse is the root cause of all the hell in this world. In childhood to adulthood, it is the denial of freedom, of joy, of a sovereign being that is infinite consciousness, which is the closest thing we have to God. Okay, we have taken an indoctrination system and stripped creativity out of the minds of human beings on the whole to where people can't even think anymore. They can only react to pressure and deadlines and balance sheets and 
it's all about the jive and the competitive nature of it all. And, oh, sure, it has all its merits and more, and people went to school for it. So, yeah, you get to go to church one day a week, and then you go back out and serve the monster. That's the truth. You get to forgive yourself for that hour before you have to go to your football game. I'm not condemned. You want to watch football and you don't want to go to church? Fine. God doesn't care. In the bigger picture of everything, when you have people out there torturing, murdering, killing children, oh, you watch pornography. Oh, you you watch your you want you don't want to be in church there with the pastor and everything else. You're just totally turning your back on God. No. The truth is that you've been turning your back on God the whole damn time. And you get a little dose of reality and you feel better about yourself. And this isn't about shaming and guilting people. It's just the reality of it. It's yes, it nourishes us. Yes, it has in the face of this hell. Yes. It's it's a good sedative. It's a good it's a good recalibrator. There's miracles that occur in church. Don't get me wrong. I'm totally understanding of it, but it's like there's the churchgoers and then there's the church. Two different agendas. Mind control, coercion, shame and guilt. You want to be like this guy up here on the cross, but you don't want to end up like him. You're supposed to be perfect like him, the image that your creator made you, but you're not you're full of sin while all these jackasses over here get to run amok in society and the pastor's trying to keep you all down here talking about how men want to sneak off and watch porn as though that's the thing that God's going to judge you like Santa Claus on a list and say, well, you know, you watched it a little bit too much. Again, I'm not justifying it and saying it's good. But what I'm talking about is the weight of things and the values. And what we need is a new foundation. The churches will come crashing down um, when and how and all that. It's not going to matter. It's going to be a free for all, though, in a sense. If they look at it this way, if they disclose UFOs, it's a game changer. It's a game changer for all religions. They are not going to be able to stand up to whatever is disclosed to the public that goes against the text. Timelines, all it's 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 done. It's done. They did look, this went on 500 years ago where there was a feudal system and kings, and you paid, you know, kings, they were the, your rulers, they were your gods. And then they realize that if they give you salvation, they could co-opt Christ's message and give it to you. You'd show up in the pews and tithe and support them like a business. Hallelujah. Amen. Pass the tray around again. Right? Okay. That's not our problem. None of these things were a problem. Because we believed in the good of what they did. And what was once good can be made new again. But it can't be coming through acts of destruction committed by people who want to see it all burn to the ground because they hate it so much. Because it betrayed them. Because what happened when you were a child, and we all forget this, is that moment where your mother and father or the adult in your life at that time saw you in pain and withdrew their care from you to satisfy their own needs, to not so sacrifice their own feelings, put those aside for a helpless, defenseless child. This is why we clamor for authority to fix these problems, because we're looking for a mother and father. We are codependent children of alcoholic parents begging for these people to change, and they can't. They're psychopaths. Sorry. That doesn't mean it's over. It means the world gets smaller. But it can only get smaller and smaller if the voids that they leave, you go to. If you don't go where there's lacking in the system, 
and create your own solution locally in your reality to your liking and satisfaction. No one will do it for you. Nobody you vote for will do it for you because they are there for that reason that they are unconscious people who believe in a system of governance that is working off of man's law and works off of knowledge that is working backwards in the past. In other words, everything preceding validates the authority, but new ideas, forward thinking, a way out of data, out of facts, higher levels of understanding, creativity, anomalies, pattern detection, your right hemisphere of your brain, which has been suppressed your entire life. And in this period, the last three years has been under assault to not even think outside of the box. People ask, well, how the hell can people three years later not be awake? They were scared shitless with the fear of dying and the suffering associated it. Guys, I'm sorry. You're not going to get even outcomes among billions of people who were raised in families that you can't even conceive of that are outside of your entire reality. Educated people have child abuse in their homes. Billionaires, people are looking at me like, well, the keg, and I'm just saying it's because the Balenciaga thing, they were like talking to me like, you know, I posted that thing about these were the, the Jenner kids. We're all children brought up in this effed up stuff. Okay, that's not an excuse for their behavior now as adults, but it's a way to understand that just because you go to Harvard or have billions of dollars doesn't know, mean you know a damn thing about what's right and wrong. Where are they going to learn? Where is Kylie or Jenner or Courtney Kardashian? Like, where are they going to learn right and wrong? From television? From their politicians? Where, where are they going to learn in, in, in school? They're going to learn right and wrong in school. And people say, well, John, they should just know because they have more money or they're no. Alice Miller said very clearly, even the most intelligent and brilliant people suffer from some of the most effed up stuff. The difference this time is that we can make people when I say make and I'll describe this. We can create a world where brilliance and intelligence comes from a nurturing place as opposed to an adverse one. You know, when I relate myself to this in the story, and this is what I invite people to do is, um, it's not simple. Jesus, if you handed a brochure to somebody and said, you know what shadow work is? And people throw that word out there like it's like it's a cool ooh, shadow. We get to do shadow. I was doing shadow work with shadow boxing yesterday with my shadow. It's like, no, that is some of the most painful shit. Yeah. And uh, very few people um, without care and awareness. You could crack up. You could especially if you have somebody who doesn't know what the hell they're doing advising you or they themselves are blind which we all are <laughs> this is about one-on-one -on -one stuff people are looking for answers out there you know if only people could do this if only it's like yeah where are you in that story if only th this could happen if only yes if only you and you go well i'm powerless to do anything well then where is it where does that put everybody else if you're the one who knows what needs to be done but you're completely powerless you know what needs to be done but you're completely powerless then who the hell is going to do it if, if nobody knows what you know it's like are your ideas better than these people oh hell yes they are what is it i know how to grow food i know how to cook i know how to read labels I know how to make things with my hands. Create. I know how to create. That's the answer. I know how to create. Where do you create from? You create from in here. This gives you the ability to imagine it and visualize it. 
This is why they constantly try to put fear in your mind to block you from this. They know so well how to insert and they've been doing it since you've been born. So it's not like, oh, this is Johnny come lately in the last five years. I have people all the time don't know I'm not programmed. I don't see those like I watch those symbols and they don't have any effect on me. It's like bullshit. I'm only saying it's not because they have the same effect on you that it has on them, but it has an effect on you because of the fact that you say you're not programmed, which is false because you were born a timeless divine being of infinite consciousness, beauty, light, source, God, child of the creator of heaven and earth and all things. And you know what? When you came in here outside of your soul, you had no understanding of history that you were walking into, the financial system and how it worked. You had no idea of taxes. You had no sense of government. You had no sense of anything. And if you were born on a remote island or in the woods or in some other part of the world that wasn't connected to all this other stuff, you'd have no clue any of it existed and you would have lived your life according to how you wanted to. Now, here's the danger in what I just said. You can ignore all this stuff and go off into fantasy land and go, you know, live out in the woods or, or in your intentional community. I'm not knocking any of that stuff, okay? But if you don't do anything during this time and you just say, you know, screw it, don't let them burn. Let the cities burn. There's some people listening right now who can't get out of the city. And you're telling them, well, yeah, I guess I'm just screwed. So I'm just waiting for it to come and wipe me away right it's like no you got to figure out what you can create in your own time and space the world of information of knowledge does not mean that there is wisdom and wisdom is a spiritual teaching on the level of a soul levels conscious awareness to know the depth of oneself and they're forcing all of this upon us because they know that there'll be a certain segment of the population that goes within to retreat. And that place will be to further reinforce the narcissistic behaviors to declare the outside world a bunch of crap. And that's where you get your new age, right? It's a spiritual ego. It's a human being having uh, a spiritual, spiritual experience, which is true, but it's also a spiritual being having a human experience. And whether you start here or here or neither, it's to understand that there is more to this life and this reality than just what's been presented to you. And when you take yourself out, and I will just prove this to you, how you can change your life is by what you bring around you. There was a study, uh, I've mentioned this in some podcasts before, I may have mentioned it on your show, and then I'm gonna turn it back to you because I know you probably have more questions. But there was a thing that this this one uh, doctor did in the 1980, in 1980. He took 55 and 65 year old men and women, and he put them in a simulation whereby they lived in an enclosed area for weeks, if not months, with all of the history and the artifacts of their 20s. So radio songs, colors on the wall, the wallpaper, the carpet, the clothing, the newspapers, the food, the cups, everything was recreated from that era in 1980 for 55, 50 to 60 year old men and women going back into their 20s, right? This is basically, they're gonna relive their 20s as 50s. Did all the biometric readings before they went in, their health, they gauged their health on, on certain dimensions of statistics and data, figure out the cholesterol, whatever, right? They go in there and after two weeks, they come out, they're all started to talk like they were younger they all started to look younger. They all started to have bodies that responded feeling healthier. 
And this is the key, is that about memory and forgetting. Never forget this. This is what the Great Reset is all about in so many ways, is to take your memories and make you forget what you are and where you came from. If everybody right now could go back to 1995, they would, right? Compared to today, uh, on a certain I mean, individuals, certainly, I'm not saying it's for survivors, they wouldn't wanna go back into that time. I'm talking about where the world was more in harmony, or at least appeared to be. And it is true, it was. It took us a lot of time, generations to get here. I do want to go back to the the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender thing. I know I kind of skipped around that, but I want to talk about trauma there and with Kinsey because it's important. But um, anyway, Emma, I want to turn this over to you because I've been talking for the last, whatever, 20 minutes straight. And there's my introduction. <laughs> beautiful train of thought. And I could, seriously, I don't think anybody would complain if you talk this entire two hours without me. You're such an eloquent speaker and you break things down in such an amazing way. And one of the things that I've just loved watching about you is your ability to evolve your thoughts. You know, I see a lot of people still stuck right where they were three years ago and they haven't broken out of where they were, you know, and I know that that's, it's so much easier said than done. Like you said, there's literally a war being waged against our bodies, minds, and hearts, you know, and it's no matter who you are, it doesn't matter. Like you said, if you're a billionaire or not, you know, but one of the things that I've loved about you is just watching watching you be able to evolve with everything that you're learning and change mm. things as you learn it and evolve it and broaden it. And it's, it's evolving with you. Your messages, like you said, you could look back at that video that went viral that you did after your video got scrubbed off Amazon. And it's like, look at where you are now. They're two mm. same message, but two totally different deliveries, you know, and, and understandings of what you knew then in your heart and how you're able to vocalize it now in a way for people to understand it in a totally different context. So I want to commend you on that. And the other thing that I want to say before I turn it back over to you to go into the LG TV topic is I saw this video recently and it came up in my mind whenever you were talking about how we really bow to authority and we're always questioning saying, Hey, there's a problem. Who's going to fix it. And then we just complain about it. We don't do anything, you know, and People could put this in any context that they want. This video was aimed at somebody talking about when we're at the gates of heaven and we're in front of God and that there's going to be people that say, God, why didn't you save all those dying people? Why didn't you save these children that are suffering? Why didn't you do this? And why do you allow this? And why is there so much violence? And the guy said, you know what God's going to say? He's going to look at you and say, I put you here. I gave you hands. I gave you all the resources. Why didn't mm -hmm. you stop the violence? Why didn't you stop the children that are suffering without food and being abused? Why mm -hmm. didn't you stop everything? What What did you do? That was mm -hmm. why you're here. You know, that that's, that is why we're here. It's yes. I know we have to work. We have bills to pay. I know that, that it's not just this, you know, we're just floating mm -hmm. around on this planet. Like there is stuff that we have to do in order to stay on this planet and to have some type of, you know, heat and, and housing and things like that and, and cars, like it's expensive to be a human, but we get so caught up in that being our purpose mm -hmm. that we think that that is why we're here. And we think all the other problems in the world, because we're not labeled as say, you know, whatever the job would be to save children, you know, it's like, no, I'm, I'm an accountant. That's not my job. That's somebody else's job, but I have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, we've lost that ability to use our imaginations and say, okay, I know that I, I have this job or I know that I'm doing these things with my day, but what can I squeeze into my week that can help solve this problem? Mm -hmm. And you imagine, yes, that's daunting to think about trying to take on a task that's so big and so scary, so horrifying, mm -hmm. and that affects you to where you, you can't sleep and trying to tackle that alone is very daunting. And I think that's why people stop. But if everybody were to put that in their head, think about if 8 billion people took an hour out a week to solve a problem that they had a problem with mm -hmm. 8 billion hours a week going towards 
solving things that, that people lose sleep over. Mm-hmm. We forget the significance of that. Mm-hmm. That's and the... we, we just want to ask questions to people and say, well, president, whoever, why aren't, why aren't you solving this mayor? Why aren't you solving this? This person, why aren't you solving this? Right. And it's Mm -hmm. again, go back to what's God going to tell us. He's, he's not going to say, oh, you're right. I just let all this stuff happen. He's going to say, no, what did you do? It's a hundred percent. And it's really about our birthright. And like, if there's, so there's, you're a multidimensional being, and that's not something I can put into words and contextualize what that actually means, because I've I've had my own experiences with what that means. And it sounds pretty crazy to me. And I go, well, it felt true, <laughs> you know, <and> I, <laughs> so I, I experienced it. But I can't tell you like, yeah, that's what it is. I just go. That was my perception. And that was my experience. What you hit upon was really important, because a lot of times people when you present them with a problem, especially one that caused them uh, a really strong emotional reaction. They want to run out there right away and get, get a hold of the problem to make it to make it stop, to make it go away, to make it not better. Or let me say this, our first instinct of most things is to make things disappear. Right. And that doesn't mean we have ill intentions about the problem. It's like, oh my God, this is so horrible. It shouldn't exist. Right. This shouldn't happen. Why is this happening? Oh my God, this is happening. And so you have, you have your freak out, right? You have a freak out moment because you're just like, holy shit, like I'm driving in my car or I'm looking around. And it's like, dude, does any of these people know what's really going on? No, they don't because they have their own lives. Like I have my own life. So it gets it gets to be a lonely place can be because like at the end of the day, oh, yeah, you know, posting on social media, get the memes out, retweets going. And then, all right, guys, on Saturday, we're going, oh, hey, I got I got plans. I got plans. Right. This is the thing. You're never going to get 100 percent buy in by convincing people that they should do something. The only way that you're going to show them is by doing it yourself. And and Emma, you're living proof of that. Like, however it came to be that you put this podcast together, however it is, it doesn't matter if it was this, per- it was your meeting with those things and you being inspired. It's like what I said in that video, it's like, if this issue of human trafficking moves you and you wanna do something, you have to kind of figure out what it is that you can do. And there's a couple of things to start. I mean, I obviously, I'm not an expert in this field. I can't sit here and tell you all the statistics, the numbers and the techniques and the grooming and then go down to like, I mean, you've had people on there to talk about all of this. And that's, that is good because people need to know that. But what has to occur is there has to be an accountability and responsibility where it's not like I'm, I'm guilty and shameful and worried about what other people are going to think of me, whether or not I do something about this. Right. Cause I've had people approach me and be like, why aren't you out there? Why aren't you doing this more? Like, why aren't you? And it's like, Hey, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I didn't know I was supposed to be the, the one. I started the conversation. I stepped into it. It's not like I don't want it, but like I've had, I mean, I've had people say horrible shit about me and, and I'm like sitting here going, well, I have to understand that they don't, they know what they know and they can only see it from where they're coming from. And so, you know, it's like, well, what can you do? It's like, I can raise awareness. Sure. But I also can say, well, what's the solution? And the first place I may have to start is I don't know. But that is my starting point to find the answer that makes sense to me, right? It has to make sense to me. And when I may mean make sense to me, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. I don't need anybody's permission to go forward with, okay, As long as I do no harm to anybody else, I'm okay as a starting point. As long as my solution is not to go harm somebody, to enact justice, revenge, whatever, 
and I'm thinking creatively, what can I create that draws attention to it? Because it's authentic. It's a real expression from coming from me. It's not a process of 10 steps that I was given by John Paul Rice or Emma or, or this other person. It's like, what is, what is the meaning in that for you? That's where the change happens. You did this podcast for a confluence of reasons, and you have changed people's lives as a result of that selfless act because you cared. That's it. I, I mean, I, I say at the foundation of it, everything flowed from that because you cared. You gave a damn. It hurt you. It put you in a, a dangerous situation potentially because, you know, you encountered certain types online and probably, you know, whatever that may have come after you because you were wanting to elevate this issue, right? And there are no guarantees that, you know, like I'm just looking at myself, I'm going, I can't sit here and tell anybody that, yeah, you have to forgive your perpetrator and also uh, not have any fear of being killed. Those are two things that I did. I had to get rid of them. I had to get rid of my fear of dying as best I could. That was an NDE recall from my childhood. The fear of dying was always with me since I was a little boy. And boy, did I pick a way to, uh, to tackle it by putting my name out there to the entire world. And when I did that, I wasn't thinking about my own safety or what would happen or the spiritual attacks that I might go under or uh, how my life would be completely ch and forever changed in ways that I don't even know yet, which I'll, you know, as destiny unfolds. And, and this is not, this isn't about myself. This is about being a vessel and a vehicle for the creator of all things while you have breath in your lungs. It's like everything you do, do all things with love. I have a sign. It sits in my living room. It just speaks to me every day. Do all things with love. When things get tough, do all things with love. Love heals time. Love heals our memories. Acts of care. These are acts of love given in the form of care. Create spaces for people to land somewhere in a world gone insane. There is no love in politics. There is no love in healthcare. There is no love in the financial institutions. There is no love in our military. There's no love in any of our entertainment sports. It's all celebrity and gossip and innuendo and battles and wars. And we're a spectator to all of it until we decide we don't want to be anymore. And this is coming in 2023 and 2024, but it will be a mother effing challenge because the distractions and the distortions of reality will get more intense. And it will reach a crescendo at a, some point globally. What you see happening in Brazil, what you see happening in London, what you he see happening in China, all of these things are coming to a theater near you in different forms and expressions. And you can sit there and go, holy effing crap, it's happening. Here it is, here it is, here it is. And you've been doing that for seven years since WikiLeaks or before that or after Trump. Pick your, pick your, pick your lane. You know, it's the same show. Freak show. Freak show is playing in a theater. And the truth is, Everything that people still believe in, they're going to believe in because waking up is hard to do as is being a human being as more evident than ever before is extremely hard to be a human being. I want to read this one thing. It's called the starfish story and it's very short, but this is really speaking to what we're talking about. One day, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. 
Approaching he, the boy, he asked, young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they'll die. The man laughed to himself and said, do you realize there are miles of miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the surf. Then smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference to that one. You have to decide what kind of world you want to live in and you have to live it in here because the outside world is going to get more and more distracting and more and more of a racket until it can anymore. And then the leaders of this world will call for world peace and everybody will crave it and they'll co-opt the sentiment of the population. Once again, this could be under different order altogether. It doesn't have to be the WEF. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. What people need to realize and what I said in my message long ago was that you can't kill your way out of this problem, nor can you vote it out. This is a so if you look at Ephesians 6, 12 and what we're talking about, powers and principalities of darkness and other places and high places and all that, it's not flesh and blood. The psychopathic mind parasite, I will just call it, is fueled by narcissistic behaviors endured in childhood that entitle us to love that we seek in material and hypersexualized violent society, ultimately a violent society, an inverted divine matrix. So when they're trying to define, um, you know, what a woman is and what a man is, both are false from the pretext of the previous program. They were false before. They weren't divine in their, um, you know, like if you have alpha males, I'm not criticizing anybody. Everybody's taken up their own avatar. It's just that these definitions and where everything is going, it's just going to be blown up anyway. To a point where you call yourself whatever the hell you want and you find your own tribe, right? According to your own identity and how you see yourself. And this is worlds within worlds. We're going into a time where there are multiple timelines now, multiple realities that are coming online, conscious levels of consciousness. There's going to be all sorts of talk about this, and it's already happening. My mind is kind of going all over the place, but this, this love that we have for when I talk about the inner child, I'm talking about your child, your little boy, your little girl who was wounded. It's been wounded by this world because your story has been here to satisfy the desires of the people running this place, however you fit into it, right? From a survivor to somebody who's highly successful by all observ observable levels. It's, You've been here working to serve the system in some way, fuel it, feed it, um, and they'll give you a new one, is my point. When this one's done, they're just squeezing out all the last juices of this before the controlled collapse of the financial system, and then they're going to flip the script. They've got technology as their answer because that gets rid of all the human inefficiencies in terms of judgment, character, greed, right? It, it, takes, it takes the bad behaviors and controls them, right? But it also, in the corporate world, and this is really where we're going, is we're, we're going away from a dissolution of government, central authority to state authority. That's going to happen. But it's really districts, federations, and territories that we're talking about, prequel to the Hunger Games localized consciousness collectives in new york facial recognition has already begun at venues pre-selecting people out that can't go in because there's a conflict between the law firm 
representing a lawsuit against the building owners. And this had actually happened in New York. A lady was going to a concert with her daughter and was pulled aside by authorities who knew her name, knew where she worked and why she was there before she even said a word. And it was all due to facial recognition technology that had spotted her and pre-identified her on a list of people that shouldn't be allowed to go into the building. So it was an enemies list. So you have to realize that 20 years of having an uh, online profile has pretty much, this is where people forget the Patriot Act and everybody said, oh, I haven't got nothing to hide. It's like, dude, you don't get to determine that. You are not a criminal, but you're giving your information to criminals, corporate class criminals, psychopaths who don't feel, or sociopaths who only feel to avoid punishment. So what we're dealing with here is a collective in which it has stained and scarred and awakened all of the subconscious mind programs in people that they've sown over years with the trauma of your childhood and the trauma of your parents, which has made you blind and ignorant and unaware to the reality of your spiritual being and they've given you a world with all of these things. And they offer you things and they're gonna offer you more things as a response to this time. It's, it's shifting the behaviors away from, like they couldn't have never have done any of this naturally without disruption. So they create everything out of chaos. They can't create anything else out of other, they can create order out of chaos, but it's, it's taking those energies and they're directing them for right now, you and I, we can have this conversation, we can have this space because we're not, we're not a threat to them. They've got their billions and trillions invested in all of this and, and they're ready to turn it on. It's just a few moments away. Psychological programming to get people to accept the new paradigm. A major cataclysmic event like a financial crash could do that or something else. But the threats are going to increase. This is what I'm trying to explain to people. These a-holes, however you want to look at them, believe they're right. And the, the way that they see the world, they're going to prove that to you. So what we were talking about earlier, you know, there's already calls for Nuremberg trials 2.0. Well, Nuremberg trials were completely botched and mishandled and let the real perpetrators get off. But we're gonna call for Nuremberg trials to have people hung and executed, right? We're gonna, we're gonna send people to incarceration for the rest of their life where we're gonna kill them for the genocide of what they're gonna do. But in the psychopath's world, they're gonna go, yeah, you all are just as bad as we are. We'll give you a villain to kill and you'll kill them. Because now you believe that We've gotten rid of the problem. And the truth is we haven't because the stain and the awakened consciousness is us doing this to ourselves. We allow it to be done to ourselves by consenting over and believing our trusted authorities when they tell us over and over and over again how despicable they are and how lack of trustworthiness they are. And, and it's not even that you have to have a villain or hate. It's just, it's... This was the illusion of reality 20 years ago. And we're coming into a time where we've been allowed to see all of this stuff. Human trafficking of children has been made an issue in the public purposefully to cause an awakening of sorts, indicative of many things. When you hear about children getting hurt or you hear about a woman getting raped, that, that hurts you at some level, regardless of whether you have that experience or not. It's, a, it's an awakened state that you have put something into somebody's mind that they would have never considered before. And you don't know the long-term implications of what that means. So when we're talking about the transgender agenda, statistically today, according to research that's fairly solid, Non-binary, bisexual, and gender fluid now are a majority identity greater than gay and lesbian combined. That's all been social messaging. When 
I was outside of my apartment and I heard these eight, nine, 10 year old boys and girls playing, talking about being a boy or a girl or whether they weren't or weren't. It's insertion, it's spell casting. It's opening up portals, doors in the mind to seek an identity. If we take everything back to the very beginning, we're talking about all of us children, including on the dimmest of souls, the psychopath as a child does not know what he is. He sees everything that his mother and father does to him as love. Pain is love to a psychopath as evidenced by their behavior. They can't feel it, but they try to imitate it. They try to acquire an understanding of what it is. And they're cut off from feeling that. So they have to make sense of it up here. And when you hurt and abuse a living being, you are creating not only a trauma wound, but you're now giving them a new understanding of what pain means through the eyes of a child that's looking at the adult as love, with love and for love and receiving love because ask any abused person and what the abuser tells them, you deserved it, you brought it upon yourself and you wanted it. The child, regardless of that, will feel guilty for having made its mother and father displeased at their behavior. And this is the truth about all of us. Um, when I was talking about Kinsey earlier, and again, I'm not a scholar on this, I just know the general way of things, my own childhood as well. And I don't mind talking about this because I think it, it, it's important. If I was born today with the parents that I had, I would probably be a transgender or a transvestite or transsexual or whatever, you know, it, it because of the abuse. Now, I don't mean to tell everybody because this is this gets into a very touchy area of that. What we're talking about is a group of billionaires and trillionaires who want to bring their world. So they want to create children in their image and likeness. And what we're talking about is the money and the institutions and the funding over decades. And this is all in Corey'sDigs.com, four part series on transgenderism, industry, the players. She names names, she puts the industries in there, she puts the money. Bill Gates and Melinda are in it. Okay, that's all you need to know. It's the Epstein establishment and their allies and their enablers who created the transgender agenda, not just today, but all the way back in the 1950s. So we have to separate those people from the people who are transgender because we're labeling all of this psychopathic and it's wrong to do that. What we're talking about are trauma-based mind control experts, Nazis, who know that by sexually abusing children, you create distortions of sexuality, even of gender. You could introduce pedophilia into that equation as well. Genetic trauma, bloodline trauma, you know, trauma, bloodline, genetic ritual, ritualized abuses, right? We're, we're talking about going back seven generations in your DNA. And you could activate them in people genetically by enabling that with violence or narcissistic behaviors or neglect. The pain in childhood of where that child's brain is mapping everything to its parents is fundamental in its development and understanding of its own self and its self image. Let me just put it like this child children from the age of from the time they're born to about a year, year and a half, 
have what they call healthy narcissism, which is the child does not see itself separate from its mother and father's body. It doesn't know it's alive, but it doesn't have an identity. So it can't command anything outside of it, giving cues to the parents who are supposed to be able to read that it's hungry or it needs to be changed or needs to be held or needs to be comforted. The issues that we're faced with today is not just today's children, but all previous generations came from really abusive homes on the whole, and even in comparison to today. 100 years ago, a lot of what parents could get away with would put them in jail, prison for life today. 100 years ago, in certain parts of the world, parents could kill their children and not have any recourse. 200 years ago, for sure. Uh, 60, 70 percent mortality rate in 18th, 19th century Bavarian child rearing gave the preconditions to both the Weimar Republic's decline and societal decline that came with it and the rise of the Nazis. Two, two sides of the same coin. You see, child abuse was the precondition for authoritarianism and nihilism. So what we're talking about is a replay of that time where we're seeing unconscious people who want to be loved, who don't feel loved by the world for whatever reason that is. It's not your responsibility to make them feel loved. You can't make somebody feel something they don't. But the thing is, is that if you look at them and write them off and say they don't have a reason to live or that they're disgusting and that they're ugly, just understand the people putting this out there know full well. I'm talking about the ones who are not on television messaging this, not your politicians, not even your activists know what the hell they're talking about. We're talking about people who see children as useless creatures as quoted in edge.org by that New York Times bestselling author who talked about, indeed, human beings are in our youngest years among the most useless creatures in the all of the animal kingdom. And then went on to talk about genetic um, engineering and then said, you know, what the upsides are and what the downsides are. And the downside was that we were going to have longer childhoods. What they want to do is they want to make your children adults before they've biologically evolved. That's part of the transhumanist agenda. It's a metaphor to all other things, biological evolution versus mechanical. And mechanical requires people who are under duress who are constantly feeling threatened by the outside world because it matches their internal state and then they give away their property. They give away their consent because they're looking for a mother and father out there, an authority figure who will give them the right to be loved, give them permission so that they can be loved. They will give them their pronoun so that they can finally go outside. And I'm not mocking because when I started seeing this and really listening to people who are talking this way, This is the truth. The anger is coming in response to them having distorted views. But this is why I'm going to tell everybody it, the gender issue is never going to be to solve. It's just going to blow up. And it's like I said, because here's why they're half right. Gender has been a social construct, a false one between men and women for decades. And so they're the falsehood of that falsehood. They are the product of that falsehood because it was not real to them. Their parents, however they came to be, maybe they watch porn, maybe, maybe they were exposed and sexually abused the children for which they have forgotten and for good reason, because who wants to really think about that and go through that with no one there to love them in their family, a cult that reinforces the denial of what happened. 
And so they'd have to seek answers on their own. And what they're doing is they're seeking answers through their children, which is their only, it doesn't make it right. But this is when we're left to all of our own devices under authority being the answer. We give up all that we lost. We're, we're all that we lost. We could get back. But we have to harmonize with ourselves. We have to harmonize with nature. This is one thing where I, I've, and I'm I'm not coming down on anybody, but I've heard people's like, no, harmonizing with nature, you shouldn't get into, it's all satanic. It's like, okay. We're part of this earth, this planet. We are connected to everything. We are connected to all living things and matter too for that. I mean, all things that we create, we're connected to. We're multidimensional beings. However you want to understand that or not, it doesn't matter. It's not really about debating what is and is not. It's either you either feel that you have some kind of divinity in the face of this madness and this horror. This isn't reality. This is our nightmare, but this is not reality. This isn't real in the sense that what you said, your imagination is far more real than this. This is a falsehood. And it's gone on for thousands of years in the highest orders, sorcery and all sorts of crazy ass stuff that doesn't make sense. And you know what? Here's the end of the, this is the end game, okay? The fact is, is that they don't have access to this heart centered quantum field. So they, but they do have divine gifts that are inverted so they have ability with telepathy. They have the ability to read minds, all sorts of things. They can do all sorts of things in that world, right? But the truth is, is that they're dying and they're in pain and they want to get out of here. They're caught between a rock and a hard place because they have to create time psychological events here to change behaviors and shift things around and granted they do have enough to get their new world started but the 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 shelf life of that the battery that will fuel that in terms of what we can do to shorten that timeline and switch time is up to us in here every single one of us this the inner work all of that people talk about it it's like look start somewhere forgive yourself for all that you have hated in life forgive yourself and and i'm saying is go to god for this if you've got to cry it all out cry it all out it's time there's no more time to hold this crap in. It blocks you from feeling your deep, true feelings. And if you have to go through, and, I, and I'm, I say this really clearly, you have to go through. There isn't, you can avoid it. You can avoid the truth, but the truth won't avoid you. If we're here to do something on some level, to be a witness, to arrive here and be alive in this time, we have all our ancestors to thank us to bring us to this moment and to honor them by doing the work that they could not, to finish the job that their own child would have wanted so badly to feel loved in a world like the one they grew up in, the hell that they grew up in. Two world wars, a financial crash, a cold war, Vietnam, political assassinations, collapses of a con you know, changes of the entire world all happening over decades. Now it's happening all in a matter of few years and months. So time is speeding up. They're aging us faster. They're gambling that they can destroy the human organism and make it convince the human organism to submit itself outside of itself once again. They need distractions, news stories that mean absolutely nothing to you other than the fact that it's their world. 
and they are advertising it to you. And then you are taking that information and you're going and posting it and amplifying it for them. This is how spiritual warfare works. You're the vehicle and the vessel. And it's like, well, John, I have to know, I have to know. Okay, at a certain point, you know enough to do, now what are you gonna do? If you stay in this space of constant stroking of tensions and fears and anger, all you're doing is you're bypassing your own internal state that you have to heal. That's why they still have an effect on you and many other people too. And the truth is we can have everything that we want, but we've got several years ahead of us, truly, before we begin to really turn the tide of things on a mass scale, if it is possible. The, the, the thing that I, I believe in my heart of all hearts is, and I said this on another show a couple nights ago, was that imagine right now a meteor hit or an asteroid that wiped out all of us and life was over. And now we're sitting here around each other post-mortem going, that's it? Yep, that's it. Oh, crap. There's all those things I wanted to do. Why didn't you do them? What was holding you back? Well, I was waiting for uh, that's that was the problem. And the truth is, if an asteroid is coming to Earth and we're all going to die. We don't need to fear anything. Because we don't die. They gave us, just remember, they gave us the fear of death because we didn't want to suffer with COVID. You see, they made it so much that you were going to suffer so intensely and could potentially die. They had to anchor you down to make you afraid of death as though this life is something you have to hold on to eternally and forever. That's them. That's them. You're taking in their program, immortality, although the promise of that is not what's going to be delivered, but you get my picture. COVID is a metaphor to all the other agendas. We're going to offer you something and you're going to accept that it's good. And it is because you believe it is because it's going to cure you of this or cure you of that. But it's going to come at a cost to you. And the people in that space that are creating have no idea. The people at Google who created the infrastructure for AI have no idea what the hell they're doing on the whole. They're messing with really dangerous things and you know you could say well i hate these people but if you met them they'd be like you and i they're not evil evil i just want to read this one thing this is important to this is eric from and it's a passage from his book it's 500 pages god only knows when we'll get around to reading it all but this is really, it's, it's from The Anatomy of Human Destructiveness by Eric Fromm, page 480, uh, The Varieties of Aggression and Destructiveness. Now, this is just a passage. This isn't the whole piece. Uh, I had still another aim, that pointing to the main fallacy which prevents people from recognizing potential Hitlers before they have shown their true faces. This fallacy lies in the belief that a thoroughly destructive and evil man must be a devil and look his part, that he must be devoid of any positive quality, that he must bear the sign of Cain so visibly that everyone can recognize his destructiveness from afar. Such devils exist, but they are rare. As I indicated earlier, much more often, the intensely destructive person will show a front of kindliness, courtesy, love of family, of children, of animals. He will speak of his ideals and good intentions. But not only this, there is hardly a man who is true is utterly devoid of any kindness of any good intentions. If he were, he would be on the verge of insanity, except congenial moral idiots. 
Hence, as long as one believes that the evil man wears horns, one will not discover an evil man. The naive assumption that an evil man is easily recognizable results in a great danger. One fails to recognize evil before they have begun their work of destruction. When I, when I go back to what I was saying earlier about all of us are children, I don't mean that as a detrimental or derogatory thing. Those people that he's talking about, the Hitler and others, believed they were doing the right thing in opposition to the falsehood that they were perceiving. Hitler spoke of his love for the country through metaphor of his childhood. And he talked about them sucking the lifeblood out of mother Germany and all, and it all began with hygiene. And then it got into the perversions going up and killing the perversions, right? The perceived perversion to kill the bad behaviors, the, the dre you know, whatever was deemed as foul in society that was causing a major problem that people wanted to get rid of and make go away. We are being ritualized right now to do this again. And I'm not just talking about trans people or gay people. I'm talking about all things to make them go away and forget. Forget ourselves, forget this past time to bury it and move on. You're going to have people that will check out. You'll have people that will completely go right back in. Awakened people who say, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm tired of it. You you want to carry that torch and that baton, good for you. You know, I, I got to a point where after Bernie, after Trump, after Biden, I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm not. Don't ask me to do anything. Don't ask me to donate. Don't don't get me involved with your your uh, campaign, your activism. There's going to be plenty of people who are going to check out and they're going to be fine and you got to let them go. This isn't you're doing this. The reason why you care and give a damn is you do give a damn for them. You're not the person who goes, I love humanity, but I hate this person, this person, and this person. Hating them, they win. Does that mean you love them and put up with them and tolerate? No. You shine a light in an area and you create something in that void that they leave behind and their world gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the truth is, is that when I was saying they want out, they want out of this pain. They don't know how to do it other than to go into their further plans to enslave humanity. And this is where people get all weirded out because they're like, John, but it's this and it's Biden is, or it's these globalists or it's the WEF. I said, you take all of that out of there and reveal all in knowledge to people. Are you going to get a homogenous point of view? Is everybody going to agree on all the stats, statistics, data? You got people who online to this day, when you mention anything about human trafficking and Jeffrey Epstein have to chime in with their political, you know, this, that, and there, it's like, there are going to be some people that are just there. And that's where they'll remain for the time being. But you're trying to do this, not to convince them, but to show them another world is possible. And the only way that you can do that is by being that very thing. Just by being who you are. This isn't like, I got to go start a business. I got to go start a charity. I got to go do this. I got to do this. I got to go out and tell everyone. It's like, no, that's exactly how you're going to fail. 100%. You can't make creative decisions with scarcity, fear, and ignorance being your guiding force of all the horrible crap out there. It's got to come from here. This is the manifester. This is what influences this up here. This doesn't think its way through. This feels its way through the solution because thinking through it is all the past. It's all the, the arguments of the past. It's all the, the debates of the past. It's about, it's about 
I mean, basically, I've been watching social media for the and I'm not, you know, I'm not condemning people, but social media kind of it goes through its conspiracy cycles, right? Oh, 9-11 again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do this over here. Oh, you remember that one? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, guys. Oh, the hidden technology, Tartaria, you know, it like goes on and on. The moon and, and the firmament. And they're like, yeah, got it. Six years ago, got it. Five years ago, got it. <laughs> Four years ago, when you told me about it one more time, it was like, yeah. Everybody's seeing it for the first time all over again, right? But then you go, okay, what are you building? Community garden, okay. There's that's an act of defiance. It's it's not about this is the thing you got to let this. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a gesture here. This is not about patting yourself on the back while giving a middle finger to everybody. <laughs> Because a lot of people will do that, and certainly social media, <laughs> it it lends itself to uh, to people who do that all the time, and they're enlightened, and you know whatever. Um, but these are the. If we make this a safe world for all children, it's safe for your own child as well. Inside, it will want your child will want to come out and play again. Your child will be able to feel infinite potentials beyond your imagination um humility it the ultimate humility uh is to be able to see i, I believe and when i talk about christ consciousness as you know i don't throw that term out there um what we're talking about is humility and seeing yourself in everybody else and I can do that only because I've examined myself so deeply that I saw where had I not had a mother who wanted to love me, I would have turned into a sociopath or rapist or a psychopath. And I know that because the effed up thoughts and feelings that I've had over the years. And I, I, I mean, I'm, I know I'm putting, I know that might be disappointing to some people, but I'm just here to tell you, I've, I've talked to SRA survivors, human trafficking people. Th they all tell me the same thing. It's like, yeah, you, this is not you wanting that, John. It's you having to deal with the fact that you had violence as a child in your life and it affected you in such a way it put really fucked up thoughts and uh, images in your head of things that you wouldn't have ever thought about before. And it wasn't just Hollywood that did that. That was my mom and dad. And my mom and dad, if you had met them, Emma, and I'm not making excuses, you would have liked them. You would never have known. You see pictures of my mother and father? You would never know that those, those two people, when alcohol got in their system, became monsters or enablers of monsters. And that's where I began really my path to forgive them, which was not an intentional one of forgiveness. It was to let go and see myself in them and that I saw my mother and father as real human beings, children who had dreams and hopes and loves just like I did and who had all of those things distorted, modeled poorly for them by their parents and their parents' parents. And those parents scarred their children, my mom and dad, with their parents' trauma. We're at a time where we can change the story very quickly, but it is a heart-centered solution. There are no more answers in the system there will be people who want to continue to fight. Let them go fight. They need to exhaust all of those options before they realize that they need to create. And let me say this, though. If we do nothing, and when I say we, I mean I, me, do nothing to at least attempt, then when the time comes for those people who are awake and finally listen to us or reach out to us and say, I've been thinking a lot about what you said several years ago to me, and I'm starting to feel those feelings. Oh my God, they're scary. What can I do? 
And if you don't have an answer for them, then you really, I want to say this politely, you really didn't care about them in the first place. Like we're going to watch people. We're going to lose people. We've lost people like through death and friendships over political, social, cultural, but we're going to lose people over conscious level things of awareness that like I, like we were talking about earlier, we, we really don't know ourselves and therefore we can't really know each other that well on such a level that we think we know and, and online social media is, is a real contributing factor to us thinking we know who people are based on what they say and how they present themselves. And, and I'm no different. Look, I have a person who loves me and, and I mean, I love her more than anything else. She, she is an angel to me. And, um, what I found was that our pain is the same. We didn't bond over that. What we did is we loved each other in the worst place. Like we accepted each other in our worst places. And the only way that we got through what would have been historically a disastrous relationship was um, the openness and honesty and authenticity of what I struggle with. She was the only woman that I could ever tell that to and not be judged. And that's, that's so valuable because all of the worst things that I believed about myself and that I fought against, I wasn't. I was shown not just because she loved me, but because she loved me, I saw the truth about myself. And I didn't have to feel like a terrible, horrible person that wasn't doing enough that it was enough to be alive and that I existed and that I cared. And why I'm saying this is because there are one, there is one person, one person in your life that cares about you. And if it's not a human being, it's the creator of heaven and earth because it created you. And made you a child with a soul so that you could have this time and this space to find yourself, to heal what you can before you leave, to learn how to be in human form as close to God through the heart of the kingdom that is in your temple within your body. It is to, however this place works, whatever role this place plays, however it is meant to unfold, whatever the destiny is, we're here to affect matter by pulling in the divine that we're born from. This world is the world of the unconscious man that seeks power and dominance and control over forces that he himself does not understand and must submit to. But you can go either way with that. You can use the unconscious path back to the divine, as is you could also use the divine path into the unconscious, not that you're pursuing the divine, but that you think you are. This is the what I call the infinity loop, right? And the reason I say that is because it's the paradox and the inverse of the opposite in each that is the same, but sees itself as different. When you all go to being, calling yourself a child of the creator of heaven and earth, and you encounter the day that you know God exists, the day you know, not the day is, that is declared, but the day that you come to have a relationship with creator is the one that will change your life forever. We can, we can have everything we want here. In this world, we can create anything. We've given it away to the corporations. We've given it away to the politicians. We've given it away to the institutions 
Self-governance, sure. But what does that really mean? Is it in laws and words or is it lived? And really, what are we talking about with man's law versus natural law? Man's law is always going to be written on past events and with influences of what works best for the system that they serve. But if you reverse that back to the people, it's basically a polarization between cynicism and truthfulness, not even optimism, truthfulness. What is true is not found in facts, data, and knowledge. In fact, all of that sort of points to it, but from a certain point of view. So you have to be willing to consider, like I said this uh, in Star Wars, there's Luke Skywalker, there's Ben Kenobi, there's Yoda, there's Darth Vader, and there's the Sith Lord, right? And all of them are telling you the truth from a certain point of view. The difference is who answers that door in here, what you have control over to where you will answer the call to those things through your abused child, through the, the child that is abused that wants to be loved by the world, seeking out fame, seeking out validation in different forms. You can seek out validation in a system. You can seek out validation from strangers. You can see, I mean, there's people that, you know, like don't know you and I, but they, but they think they do. And there's nothing wrong with somebody having a, you know, an understanding of who you are, but not knowing who you are. That's why this, this person in here is so important to know. And I'll tell you this, as far as I'm concerned, the wisdom that I've drawn from is not going out there, is to go in here and to work through this, to really straighten out, not my thoughts through my thoughts, but through my heart and what I felt was, it changed everything. It puts you in a state of play where you're not thinking of Coke versus Pepsi, Nike versus Reebok, Republican or Democrat, or capitalism or socialism. It's an invitation to imagine outside of these choices over here that are false, that we know are false, or they don't work, what other potentials over here exist. And there's ones that you create in your mind. And then there's ones you deliver in material. And there's, there's this right here, this is the most powerful one because it can speak reality into existence. God did so into the world. And if we're his children, we too also can, or by extension of that, are invited to change the world through our voices and our being. These things are all very possible, but they're not going to happen through a movement that is co-opted by authority or messaged. In fact, if anything, what they will try to do is they will message things to gather in those movements, those organic conscious awareness uprisings, if you will. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to run in to fight it, to burn it all down. You're going to have to let them get it out because, and I'm not saying you have to put up with it and tolerate it. I'm just saying it's inevitable because people are so angry, they're seeking a way out and they don't have any answers and they don't have the wherewithal within themselves to stabilize. This is not me excusing this. This is just, this is an effect of our child abuse system. Um, all of those people believe they're doing the right, people in, in Antifa and Chaz and in Portland, they believe they're doing the right thing. I don't agree with them whatsoever and the totally antithesis of what they stand for, but, but that's what child abuse is and trauma is. It's, it's a contradiction of reality. And it creates damage and destruction and with righteousness, you know, and facts and th these are the oppressors and we have a right. It's, it's our right. It's like everybody's going to say that. Yeah, in different ways. 
anyway, I could go on forever, but I just wanted to turn it around to you because I know we've got, uh, I don't know how much time left. Wow, that was so deep and so beautiful. And I'm sure everybody listening feels that in their heart. You always talk from a place of such, it's like you, your brain just goes somewhere and goes on this you know, journey and takes us with you. And it's really neat just to see where, where your thoughts go. It's beautiful. Mm. As you were talking, I had a couple of things come up that uh, I wanted to talk about. First of all, I know you get some people that fight you back on this, uh, mm -hmm. talking about that killing violence, it's, it's not going to solve anything. And right. the perspective that came up to me as you were talking about that was something familiar like the medical industry. We mm -hmm. see this happen all the time where there's a problem, somebody has a disease. And instead of looking at what could have caused this, that we can make it go away, mm -hmm. it's how do we mask it? Here's a pill, take this, and it'll it'll help the symptomology. We're not solving what's going on in you, and it's still mm -hmm. there, has the potential to come back, but we're going to mask it for you. Here's a band-aid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so on the outside, maybe you don't feel pain anymore. Maybe you don't recognize that there's still dysfunction, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Right. And I think right. this really goes along with what you're saying. Cause I know people fight you back and say, what do you mean? This is unacceptable. You have empathy for these people. And it's saying, no, it's, that's not what we're saying is that we need to just accept people and say, oh, you know, they're doing all this mm -hmm. stuff. We're okay with it. We're just gonna let them go. We're saying, how did we get here? How does a human go from being an innocent child to a monster? Something mm -hmm. happens. Cause like mm -hmm. you said, we're not born that way. And we do a disservice to everybody else going through trauma that like you said, might have the potential to become that person one day to mm -hmm. say, how do we stop it at the root? How do we find out what created that? What has to happen in somebody's life to make that happen? Mm -hmm. Go back and reverse engineer how we're raising children and how we're raising the next generations of society to not repeat that pattern. Mm -hmm. Because if we just kill off, right, the cancer, if we just put a pill or a band-aid on something, we don't know if it's actually gone, right? We're, we're covering that symptomology of it, but mm -hmm. we're not finding the root of it and actually saying, this is what's wrong. And this is how it might not. And again, killing is the easy way, right? It's, it's the pill. You take the pill, mm -hmm. the, the problem's gone briefly. Right. But when you actually do holistic healing, if you go on this journey that you have, and you're the testament of what you're talking about, if you take the time to go on that journey and say, all right, this is going to take longer than just killing it off, but let's mm -hmm. find out how we got here and let's reverse engineer this and try to make the world better the long way, the right mm -hmm. way, the way mm -hmm. that's going to make sure that this doesn't happen again to future generations, that children aren't growing up in an abusive system, turning them into mo unconscious monsters. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and people don't realize, and I, and I don't blame them, but they don't see where this is going in that in two to three years, what you're outraged about today is just not even going to pale it's going to pale in comparison to what you're going to see and so when i say that i mean on the fringes of society but they'll be they'll be um they'll be more pronounced than they are today i mean i i'd take it like this way it's like so and this is i don't really like going into this but but and just for the reason that it just amplifies the disparity and and or d despair i should say so like these drag shows and, and yes they're they're the the drag shows have already always been around it's the ones that are now targeting kids okay and you have parents who like i said this is all when i when i read the read the testimonies and I listen to parents talking about why they brought their kid there these are unaware people I, I know that is extremely hard. This is all goes back to people who are going, Kim Kardashian should know better. She's a billionaire. It's like, right. What these people have grown up around and why they are resonating with these things is because they are unconscious of their own traumas. This is what bonds it all together. It's the glue that holds it together. It's the identity and feeling safe and free. So drag shows have been around forever, but like I said, it's the targeting of kids and putting that in front of children that is, and let me just tell you, 
the debate over this is not going to end when people you shut down the shows because what what they're planning for and i don't know how they'll do it but if they have to manufacture it they will they're basically wanting to recreate the stonewall riot that's why they're teaching kids about it that never grew up during that time all about it so that it primes them for the return to that time when things get out of hand in those communities beyond you have to you have to take community out of the picture right and, and stop talking about it as a community as though it's like the new age the new age movement it's not a movement it's a conf it is a confluence uh, it's a it's a it's a combination of misunderstandings of so many different things from this angle this angle they that make it kind of all a conglomerate but it's not a conscious like thought of concepts that is evenly shared by people so when we talk about communities what we really need to define is between an identity and a cult and a cult is one like a cult is a belief but those beliefs are maintained by feelings and if you have abused childhoods going into feelings you're going to have distortions of them that are plugging in with their own understandings of what they're looking at and seeing it differently from you that doesn't mean you have to agree with it and tolerate it and go oh well that's okay then no but if you go what we're talking about killing your way out of this okay so let me just pose it to people thinking about well these these parents are horrible and they shouldn't have children and you know okay fine 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 i accept all of that on 100 percent face value what are you going to do with the children of these parents when they grow up to become adults what are you going to do they got indoctrinated with the freak show normalizing sex on stage as a six-year-old and it plugs right into pornography and so they're going to be brought up in a electronic hallucination world a psychopath's wet dream because it's non-feeling it imitates feelings but it's not real feelings so they're going to be stripped of their their sentient being they're going to be more impulsive less creative less thought driven and pleasure seeking were you going to kill them too they were children once but now they're adults so i guess they're killable do you see what i mean it's never ending right. it's what it's what and this again this is not but this is going back hitler is a perfect psychopath but the people had gotten so desperate that's why they voted for him he went after the homosexuals because of that thing that had permeated pornography pedophilia group orgies that was babylon in the weimar republic which had incredible art look this is what i this is so deep because the nazis that are doing this to us and i call them nazis they'll destroy it to resurrect it hitler wanted to burn and he did but he wanted to burn the cultural center in berlin to the ground like he wanted to destroy it all the architecture all the works all the great accomplishments he wanted to destroy it and recreate it that wasn't because he was a evil plotting person he believed in his madness that that was the right thing among all the other effed up stuff that was the least of it but this is what i'm talking about our enemy is not out there it's the one in here the devil's greatest trick was to convince us that he didn't exist in us that we could not be turned there are so many people out there who would tell you this they've been through their own experiences i can only testify my own life but people would say i'll never be you know i'd never beg for food was a guy years ago who was wealthy and ended up being homeless and he said oh you'll do things that you never thought you would do when you're starving including hand jobs if it gets that bad 
right? And you got no other options. This is where we, we really need to focus on understanding that when I say you don't kill our way out, yes, people have to be held accountable and responsible, but I'll just give people this one little clue in history. Wasn't that long ago when, when Osama bin Laden was announced killed. This was in 2012, 2013. I think it was right around. Yeah. He was announced killed and there were people dancing in the streets of America. I was there. I was, I saw it in Venice beach, California, people dancing, celebrating, cheering. Yeah, we got him. Where are we today? What I'm saying is, is that, yeah, political, sure, all that, but we didn't learn. We thought we get rid of the bad guy and he wasn't even the guy who did it. Right. You see, this is what I'm saying. We're entering a world of, of beliefs and time that is unprecedented in human history. And what, what, what we need to focus on is local what you can affect in your local space, starting with your own self, working your way through your home and all the people that you love and who love you. And it's also about letting go certain things that you can't change. People want to argue, you know, I'm going to pick up the crusade and argue against this or that and let them. That's fine. They can. And that may not all be everything that they do either. They may not stay stuck there. But if you do something different, if you don't play into that, somebody in your life is going to take notice, especially when the world's going to hell. And you're going to have your, your, your stuff together. And you're going to go, what's going on with you? Why are you not freaking out about all this? Yeah, it's bad. But me worrying about how bad it's going to get and crying out about it and memeing it, you know, into exi- out of existence is like going to solve anything? Or am I just waiting for somebody to come in and, and, and stop the bleeding? And then it'll all be better again. It's like, no, everything has changed. We're never going back to the way things were. But also for good reason, too, because what we had before enabled all of this. So yesteryear and nostalgia and all of that play into the spell casting and magic. But the truth is they only act as a sedative for a temporary relief for the next thing comes in. And this is where you just have to unplug from the show and realize that all of this is being done. Psychological warfare, World War III is on the mind. And fear is the mind killer. And if they get you with fear, they're going to come after your body and your soul. That's just how it works. And the truth is that all of us can stand up and say no to this without firing a single shot. Martin Luther King Jr. um, and his supporters marched across that bridge and got their asses kicked, beaten up and um attempting to go across and there was debate for a day about what they should do if they should violently attack back and he said no we're going to get up there and we're going to walk again and they won because it showed that power had no authority over what was true and that they would not stand down in the face of fear and death and they wouldn't turn violent they wouldn't become the very thing that hated them They didn't allow their own hatred to draw them into conflict. You know, there are a lot of people that get really pissed off about um, forgiveness. These people don't deserve to be forget. I totally, let me just say, yes, you're correct. You don't have the ability to see where they can be forgiven if there is a chance to pray for their souls. Um, And when I say forgiven, Forgiveness is not them. First of all, you're never going to get an apology. But my dad didn't give me one either. 
So how did I forgive him? Because I, I saw through my own pain. And where I forgave him was for the child that he was born as that did not have a choice in what happened to him. He made very bad choices from there, but he was given a set of bad choices to begin with, not the same as everybody else. And he was born into wealth. He went to Notre Dame. He was a star athlete and he was loved by people. This is every single one of these people, by the way. Mine just didn't happen to not be in a, you know, like Hunter Biden or, or Ashley Biden have a father who was on the international world stage and pimped them all around, you know, for business deals. But that's his dad. If it was anybody else, he'd say, get the hell out of my life and goodbye, but it's his father. That's what made a difference. It's extremely hard to forgive, to love your enemies as Christ commands you to do. It is. He said, turn the other cheek one time. I don't know about two, but the one time was really profound when saying that because it was to show you I am of no threat to you. And I am still listening to hear what you have to say rather than to judge you across. And like did the one time is to say, was that intentional or was that accidental? Was that you will have to defend yourself. I'm not telling people, but the, the ones that get really pissed off, it's like, yeah, there is no forgiveness. That's a crock of blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, the way it's applied it is the way it's messaged it is forgive and forget the pain does not go away the real healing comes from within you you're never going to get the answer from the other person that harmed you what you need in order to move on from that situation so by killing them alone it's not going to ease your pain people who are for who are pro-life for children and then you know, clamor for the death penalty. Let me tell you, the damage has already been done and you can't deter people that way, especially psychopaths, because psychopaths don't care. They just don't care. They don't care if they're going to get caught. The, the real issue is to figure out how do we create a world that is safe for all children, including our own inner child to come out and play with, so that, that the truth is that there will be fewer sociopaths, narcissists, psychopaths, pedophiles, and the like, and rapists, because they'll wake up in a world that loves them. Not for being a psychopath or a sociopath or a narcissist, but to actually turn the tide away from that world being projected and messaged and normalized for them through the corporate structure, through our government, through the media, through any egoic driven institution that uh, seeks to dominate and control its audience through manipulative means, coercion, uh, sex, lust, basically like everything that you are not born as, there is an answer out there in the world and it will call to all of these people if there is no foundation out there to anchor against. They only know what they know and as this train has already taken off from the station, they're human beings. And I'm not saying, oh my God, listen to this guy, he's nuts. Oh, I know, I know what I'm saying. They're really distorted, fucked up human beings who never chose this life the way it turned out for them. They did not have free will as children. That's been robbed from them. This is only to understand so that we don't think that we are like them. We are in our pain, but the way we see the world, the way we perceive it, the way we judge it, the way we feel about it is completely different in, in that where it is mapped. It's the same feelings 
but they're mapped to all sorts of distorted places. You know, when I, I'm talking about my sexual abuse and what that did in terms of living two lives. So there was the one that was John Paul Rice, the good guy that all these girls like just thought I was magic man or good, good guy. And I disappointed all of them because I had this other shit going on inside that couldn't be resolved through them. Just like they had stuff that couldn't be resolved through me. And when I look back at it, I, I see in all these relationships that I had and people whose hearts I broke, um, I got to a point, Emma, where I avoided getting involved with, um, like I could spot the more innocent, less troubled ones, and I avoided them altogether because I didn't want to hurt them in that they wanted to fall in love and I wasn't capable. And I knew that at a certain point, and there was a time where I got to the point where I thought I would be alone the rest of my life because of the fact that I'm like, that abuse, I wasn't sitting there blaming the abuse, but I never, I never could feel myself coming out of it that I would have to bury my shame and guilt or fight against it the rest of my life and not be able to really have a normal life, but maybe just to tell people advice on, you know, the things that I'd learned as a, as a way to help people. And I got the best of both worlds in that I found the very thing that I was looking for in the way that I least expected it to occur. And I, and I think that what your show does and what it really should say to everybody is that your imagination is the engine of the creation of the divine. And it's not, it's, it's, it's artistic, it's creative, it's imaginative, it's intuitive, it's feeling. And what you feel and what you bring into existence in this world through your voice, through your face, through your senses, through your creations, whatever they be, are representations of the divine. In fact, almost all art is. And in fact, it, is, it doesn't rely on self-doubt, which promotes propaganda. It's actually an authentic expression that can last thousands of years as evidenced by some of these paintings and Sistine Chapel. And it, it's like you're going out there. Here's, here's what it boils down to. You're going out there what the, the wisest people say. The old man goes out and he plants the tree knowing that he will not be around to enjoy the shade of it when it grows up but he knows why he's doing it. And that to me is the most beautiful thing is this continual never ending story and the greatest story ever told all in one where the truth is, is that we don't die and that death is not to be feared and that there is something both outside of here and here that's influencing all of this. The reason we're still here, the reason we're still alive, the reason why evil has the trouble it has to enslave us is because it always believes that it knows what is true. And in fact, it only knows it's propaganda materializing it through witchcraft and spell casting to manipulate and guide people but they couldn't let you know their secrets. Otherwise you would be free. And the, and here's the key. They're going to keep playing this game with us in different iterations over time until we realize the game that we're being played into. When we stop playing their game, it's a free will choice. And this is really what it's all about is that 
they're making their free will choice. They're giving us ours. And we're going to see what shakes out, right? And this isn't about spiritual battles and warfare where we've got to wage warfare. It's about the authority that we bring in here, which is Christ, which is peace. The ultimate authority of Christ was peace. And where he took that message and who he, who he took that to was the beggar, the thief, the leper, the adulterer, the dregs of society, the people that nobody cared for anymore in the world of man who sought power and control and dominance. Christ overcame the world. Look, there's a lot of people that misinterpret things, and I don't sit here and try to redefine them for them, but I'm just saying, take the four Gospels, however you want to look at them. Is that a story that exists today, or is it 2,000 years ago, or is it still continued? And when he told everyone, and I, I'm very curious, clear about this. Like I said, I don't care what you believe, but he used metaphor to describe in parable, to describe concepts like a movie outside of others and himself. And then there was also literal. And so what people try to do is to water down the literal when he said, you will do my acts and greater than these the hell does that mean? It's to speak the truth so the deaf can hear. I'm saying there's also the touching of hands and the healing and all of, I'm not denying, we're returning to a time of magic. And that that word is, has been bastardized because it's usually conjured up into something, you know, a little bit more sinister. But what I'm talking about magic is this supernatural powers that you're born with as a child, telepathy, telekinetic powers, empathy, compassion, forgiveness, unconditional love, that's magic. And the reason why it's supernatural is it's supernatural in an unnatural world. It appears to be supernatural. It appears to be genius. It appears to be magic to the people who don't realize that you're the magician as well. Your magic is here. This is where all things flow from that magic, real magic. When I talk about magic, I'm talking about divine divinity, not self-serving, not hexes, potions, spells, manifesting things, you know, for your wants and desires. It's self-sacrifice. It's, it's the, the people who can look up and say, oh, do this, 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 and this, but wouldn't be willing to, they'd be the last one to die for their cause. And it's the same thing. And I'll just tell you, it's the same thing, same cult in the WEF, reducing the world's population and talking about it like an intellectual and all that. It's like, well, asshole, why don't you volunteer first to go? If, if it's all about this great sacrifice and we're just going to have to cut some people out of this equation, that's the way it's got to go. And that's kind of how they present it in a very casual way. It's like, well, I'm. let's go then. Let's see you do it. Make the great leap for humanity. No, not them. They're the planners, you see. They get to preside all over that, you know, and watch it all you know, come to fruition. That's their excitement about it. It's like, oh, yeah, well, we get to kill people, but, you know, it's, it's, it's for the greater good. There will be people who believe this. And it's unfortunate because we're not, we're not aware of that yet, that that will actually come forward in, in human beings on a, not on a mass scale, but, but a disturbing level of people. Um, even from the spiritual community, from people that I've, and when I say spiritual community, again, cult, but, but where uh, I was told, this was actually before, two months before COVID, um, by a lady I went out with on a date in Atlanta. Uh, she basically told me that God would bring a plague and kill all the, uh, the bad people. And I was sitting here thinking, I wonder what she's thinking now. 
maybe she thinks it was all intended for the bad people to die, you know, and that COVID was, listen, I'm going to tell you one thing, if anything, the, the, and this is not to be simplified this way, but I'm going to try to say it. Our awakening is both within and outside. And there were several people who have lost their lives during this time for different reasons. A lot of it, the jab, so on and so forth, uh, and the side effects of that and the autoimmune diseases, uh, that have been exacerbated by weakened immune systems. Um, those people didn't die in vain. They were husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grand, grandma, and grandpa. Painful memories of their death over a virus. However, those people understand them to have died. Their death also contributed to our awakening. And that's not to say, oh, that, that's okay, because it could have been me. This is where when you can put yourself in the story of where it could have been you, that's when you go, this is where I will honor humanity. This is where that person's life, I got to make it. They didn't. And most of us go, thank God, not me. But at the same time, it's like, if it was you, you would hope that at a soul level, the rest of humanity would see your suffering and what you died for is also what you lived for. And where you honor the memory of all those who came before you and are not here and the ones to be born is, is to see yourself as no different than any of them. We all come from a child. We are all children of a creator of heaven and earth. We have a soul level agreement when we come in here, however that is. John Paul Rice, the human, is an extremely flawed and terrible human being in terms of my rap sheet, and not because I was a horrible person, but I was a very dangerous person because I was an unaware man who had childlike views of the world. And, but the soul of John Paul Rice's soul is the thing that kept him waking up, waking up, wake up, Neo, wake up, Neo as I was experiencing my human life. And this is true of any one of us that we, when we make this commitment to do this for ourselves, we're doing it all for all the people who loved us that got us this far. We're alive right now. This is a miracle of existence to be alive and what it all means and why it is and why it's all happening the way it is. God only knows, but we're going to find out one day but we can do something about it. We can make ourselves more aligned with the creator, more aligned with the divine in the smallest acts of self-reliance and basically not going to authority or capitulating to it and asking for permission anymore. But we have to do this individually and then we'll do it together and we will take back this world in a peaceful way versus a violent revolution, which can ultimately be co-opted. Because you can't create when you're in a state of fear and hatred and destruction. And for people who believe that we're all going to go out there with pitchforks and we're going to get these people by the millions, go and hang them or whatever, I'll just tell you, the truth is that if you give a million people the taste of murder, and their bare hands, that is a husband, a wife, a brother, and a sister. No, I, I'm- this, this is amazing. And I do want to be respectful of your time because we did go a little bit over. Um, yeah. But well, I know you also have a life too. <laughs> well, this is, this is an amazing conversation. I could keep going for 10 more hours, but I do want to remind people, just as John's saying, you know, you look at all the creatures of the world, cheetahs were given speed to survive you know all these creatures on earth were given these physical features to survive we weren't you know we have to use we were given an imagination and create and creativity mm -hmm. to navigate this world which is why we have things like homes and we have all these 
different ways that that we can survive here, you know, and that is our gift. That's what we were given. And so to not utilize that while we're here, what a waste, you know, what a waste of of what what we were given. And so I know that John, your messages, you've you've taught me so much and showed me so much more wisdom than how I had perceived the world. And I know people that listen to you, you have a way of melting people's hearts into reminding us again, who we are. You know, a lot of people are very lost with that and rightfully so, you know, there's so many different things being thrown at us and it's very hard to navigate the world right now. But what I love about you is you always bring us back to that and remind us. And I know everybody listening is going to leave this conversation and they're going to feel that same heart melt of, gosh, you know, there's, there's a different way to look at the world than what the news is telling me to, you know, the, the psychological warfare really does hit even the best of us. And it's not that we're all malicious and we're all bad people. It's just every way possible since we were born has been waged against us to take us away from who we are. And Mm -hmm it's a really good lesson to go back to that child and say, who were you before you stopped believing, you know, and why can't you go back there and rekindle that within yourself? And nobody does a better job than you, John, in reminding us all of that thing that is in us all the time that we can access at any point if we just decide to. So I just mm-hmm. want to commend you on that because you've, you've helped me. And I know you've helped millions of people around the world, you know, see the world in a different way than, than what we've been programmed to. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Thank you. Well, um, you know, it's, it's the things that we do that we don't know we're doing and that can go so many different ways, but when your intentions are, are pure and real, um, you can move mountains. You really can. I've had, I mean, one of the things that I have gotten out of this experience, making films and stepping into a a situation and an issue that I didn't really intend to um, on the level that I did, but I'm extremely grateful for on many levels, um, is when I get letters or messages from people who said, I listened to your podcast on such and such show or your interview. And you're the reason I got off my medications and cured my bipolar disease and or disorder. And like, I mean, stuff like, and I don't, the thing is, I don't really, you know, I, I, I don't think that they're lying to me. You know, I don't think, I, I don't think that's why somebody writes that to you, but they said that, you know, like when you start hearing people, oh, I've been listening to him for years and it's just like, I really had that much to say. I mean, it, that, that's, that, that was important, but it's not to diminish what your capabilities are. It's just, you're humbled by it because you're going, God, with so little, I'm just talking. And I'm, I'm trying as, as not hard, but as authentically as I can to be forthright with people about what I, what I know, what I see, what I know, what I feel, what I believe to be true, and what I hope for too. And it's not a hope out of desperation. It's a, like when you're given the opportunity, I, I guess, you accept it in such a way that it's not like I've got to be all solemn and, you know, but you're humbled by this experience because in sharing you give and you open doors for people in ways that you can't even imagine having done and lives that you will have touched for which you will never know Maybe, I mean, maybe one day, but that's not the point of it. It's this, it's the service to do it. Like, not for me, (laughs) not for me. Um, It's really about this bigger picture 
which is not all the horrors of the world, but what are the truths in the world about everybody and all of us. And that's really what we're talking about is the the universal truths that are out there, the divine truths that exist, that were always there, but we we were pulled away from them or lacked attention or we didn't we didn't perceive them there before. It, it, Emma, it's like going back and reading a book that you really loved when you were younger and then you see it Mm -mm. depth of it in ways that you couldn't have at the time you read it it was like the words now jump off the page and speak to you at such a level that you understand because you have the lived experiences and the self-reflection to be able to uh, emotionally plug into that and where it's leading you and this is the best thing about your life if you really get down to it your life has been a divine plan from the very beginning I mean, we try to simplify it in our human minds about God and his or its plans for us. And we can't conceive. It's like eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love themselves, but not themselves, the idea of themselves, the creator within them. This is not, and I want to be very clear about this, there are men and women in this world who wish to be gods and rulers above us. Christ is distributive. Christ goes outside of authority. Christ is with the people and the people who who need the most. So it is, so what I say is the God creator within is with those who need the most, because those are the children that want to get back. He was on the cross. To the right and to the left, he had a good thief and a bad thief. And the good thief, we call him the good thief, but he was a thief of something, pretty bad, bad enough that he was up on that cross to be executed, right? I mean, according to law. But what does he say to him? He says, when you go to your father today, don't forget me. And he says in the same breath, Jesus replies, brother, today you will join me in paradise. Forgive them and they will be forgiven. You put all this together and what does it really mean? It's like you're the true and worthy son and daughter of the living creator. And is to bring that presence into reality, not for yourself, not to serve yourself or to make yourself greater, but for the reason that you know that everyone is there with you is the same as you, is no different. I had to go into my childhood to be able to see where I would have ended up as the prostitute, the prostitute or the trafficked person to see myself not that i could have been but that uh that my childhood if it had been directed in a certain way could have been an abuser it's a fine line it really is and i was fortunate enough to kind of watch it like a movie in hollywood for 19 years I watched my childhood play out. I watched my projection of my mother and father into the world play out. And I was able to see myself and everyone's story and how I easily could have been like that or like that. And I had choices very similar to some of those people to go and work for money to date. At 22 and it didn't work out thankfully but i considered it and now looking back on it that was insane right but at the time it made sense right because of what i had known and then there was also what i didn't know about myself at that time and why i would even consider you know dating for money at 22. I was a brilliant kid. 
had just made millions of dollars for a sales company. And here I was considering $400 an hour to date somebody. No sex, but of course you negotiate that later. But it's not, it's not about those things. It's that, is that I am my brother's keeper. To really live that, to really know what that means is to live it in your heart. And you can't, this is really where it gets down to. It. It's like, you can go preach the word of God to people, but if they don't take it, dust off your shoes, go the other way. It's not a, oh, good luck to you later. It's like, I planted the seed. I prepared that person for the next speaker. For when the time reaches them, where they are on their soul journey mission, back to the father of all, they will have remembered that there was somebody who cared and not condemned them for not believing what they believed because it wasn't a message and a word and it wasn't a book that I was holding up as my authority to them. It was my lived word here. I spoke out of my mouth, came forward in my eyes, was felt with my embrace. That is Christ. That's Christ consciousness right there in lived manifestations of everything and it only can be lived in you if you really believe it and feel it believe it until you know it for yourself and the knowing for yourself will give you mountains of wisdom over the rest of the world in their knowledge because they'll be arguing and debating about facts and data and this that and this theory and that theory and this person's quote and that person's quote and it's like at the end of the day if i can't take any of that and make it my own or come up with something and I go, oh my God, you know what? That's actually what he said a hundred years ago. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's the return to the divine, the divine feminine and divine masculine, which are opposites of what's projected out into the world, even as masculinity and feminine are messaged today in a false world, the divine feminine, and divine masculine are the truths. They're the truths. It's a harmony between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And it pulls in attributes that are about feeling, intuition, creativity, sensitivity. It's not about being feminine or sensitive. It's about being a sentient feeling being. And this is the battle that we're, we're up against in this world. And this time is holding that space to be a loving, compassionate, caring being like we were born as children. That's our intended nature in our state, not a contentious battle over what is and isn't true. Then it's, then we're not talking about what is and isn't. Truth is truth. Truth requires no belief. Truth is not debatable. But here's the problem. Truth also can't be proven. That's why I'm saying you have to be the thing that you are in order for it to be true. Otherwise, it's just talk. It's an idea. It's something that hasn't materialized. It's a debatable thesis or a theory that you're offering of what might be. But if you go out and do it and you show everybody that it can be done, guess what? Holy cow, that can be done? Yep. That easy? Yep. Okay, create a school system, create a healthcare system. We don't have to go through corporate government. We can do all the things that we need when it's one-on-one -on -one and when it's caring. The real care is the love in the form of an act is doing anyway. With that being said, I really wanna just say this, to all the people out there who are going through really difficult times, understand and know that you're not alone. First and foremost, you're never alone. And you're alive today. And the only way that you're going to fail at this is if you give up. That's it. And I'm not going to sit here and tell people and give them reasons to live if they don't feel that there's anything to live for, I can only tell you, I've been there. I totally understand. And it is not something that you can command out of someone to say, 
you, you shouldn't feel that way. Feel, let them feel that way, but be with them. Feel, feel it with them. Take some of the load off for a moment. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your care. Let them feel your love. It's, it's extremely hard to be a human being. And in this world, it's paramount that we understand that there is no one, there is no child that needs to grow up ever hating its mother and father. And there's no one in this world that needs to be alone, needs to. Maybe the narcissists, we need to let them deal with themselves and figure it out because that's what they will do eventually. They may never come around full circle to see their role in all that they've created, but they will acquire knowledge at least in order to mitigate their damage potentially. But as long as we keep feeding that machine, that monster of greed, it is going to continue to assault us. And this is not about quitting your job and becoming, you know, like out in the nature and, and going total, you know, poverty, but it's starting to bring in new things and letting other things go. That's what we got to do. We've got to change out. We've got to recycle. We've got to move, you know, we got to rotate the crops to keep the soil rich. And it's, it's one of those things where we're, we're, there is love in this world when we put it there. Otherwise, it's neutral. When there is no love, that's when it assaults us. But love is the barrier that protects everything because people seek love and care. Only sick people don't. And even the people who you think are your enemies that are yelling and screaming and shouting at you and are fear-based, they're suffering and need a world of love as well. That virus that's in their mind will go away in time. When the world is calm and is peaceful and is loving and is serene and has the divine manifesting everywhere, it'll be really hard for evil to hang out there. This is the truth. They're suffering. They are suffering in a prison of their sins and of their own making. And if we show that there's another world that's possible out there, you might get some of them leaving their old way and coming over. And if we build a bridge to a new future, there's a lot of things that we can do that we can't even imagine today are possible. And if you commit yourself to becoming the most authentic, honest, truthful person, seeking out the deepest humility, you will change your life in ways that you have never even considered before, nor could imagine on your own. And with that, all I wish to say is if people wish to follow me, come to Instagram, come to Twitter at no restrictions. I'm also on Telegram. Uh, I think it's no restrictions, JPR. Um, I post a lot of different content on there. Um, and if you'd like to see my movies, Child's Voice is on Tubi. It's also on uh, multiple, I think it's on Apple TV. Now there, there's like multiple places you can find it. Uh, it's also available at norestrictionsent.com. And uh, if you like the movie, you know, it's also on Stash TV on YouTube now. So if people want that and it's got Spanish subtitles, I just got that on there. So if you go to Stash TV on YouTube, uh, you can find a child's, you can search on there, a child's voice. It'll come up and watch it for free. Uh, it's got captions. <laughs> I'm just saying, share the movie. Uh, it's a beautiful story. And uh, our other films are on there too, but that and, um, well, all of them deal with different issues, but... Emma, I just really, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, um, all that you've done for survivors, uh, the voiceless, the heart and care that you've had. You're one of the few people I know that has stuck it out through a lot of difficult times. And uh, your courage along with Becky and Bridget is astounding to me because the things that you all are tackling are really intense and sometimes dangerous to 
you know, amplify these messages. And they're really important to get out there at the same time, even if it affects only one other person, you did an amazing job. And I, I do believe that all of us in the end will know what we did here when we leave the impact that we made. And really, it was us through our creator doing it, not us ourselves. I do take credit in the sense that uh, not credit for myself, but just that um, that it is an, an honor to be um, whatever a carrier an ambassador um, of that message. But really, I'm just grateful to be alive and thankful to almighty heaven and father that I am here today to do what I can and had the life that I did and the memories that I did and the abilities I did to be able to serve humanity in some way without me knowing that that's what I would be doing. So anyway, this is a long way of saying I love you all and I thank you for everything that you guys are and do and share with others and uh, your audience is just awesome. They're just, they're just a great audience of people. You are just amazing, John. Like I said, I'm just so proud of your journey. The world's better because of you and the show wouldn't be, yes, I know it's the creator, but you are such a big influence in me even wanting to use my voice. So that's something I'll never be able to repay you for. And I know you've influenced more people than you'll ever know that will never tell you the impact that you've had and that you're going to continue to have. And I know you're just getting started on your journey and I'm so excited to see where life keeps taking you because your voice just keeps amplifying and uh, refining. And it's a really beautiful thing to watch. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking us on this journey with you, for your courage to speak out, to change your story when you're approached with different information and to keep preaching these, these really beautiful messages in a time when it's so hard sometimes to even find beauty you're the constant reminder that it's there and so for that i thank you for coming on here and for sharing and everybody go follow john if you're not uh he's just on every platform he's always just posting the most inspirational beautiful things while also showing you the hard truths uh, but always laced with love kindness generosity authenticity and so much compassion and you're really missing out if you're not following his content it's it's a breath of fresh air <laughs> whenever you. you're scrolling through instagram so please go support him you know voices like ours don't get amplified uh on purpose you know so your follows your shares all of that really helps get voices like john's out and if you've stuck on along and, and watch his podcast and his content you know, he, like i said i think he has one of the most important voices of, of our time so let's keep elevating him john thank you so much for being here and everybody listening thank you so much for supporting god bless you and we will see you next week <laughs>